All right, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We are about to wrap up this series on welding the sewer crawler bodies using the Stronghand Tool Precision Welding Table, the Build Pro Precision Welding Table, along with the 114-piece uh, modular fixturing kit for tacking all this stuff up and getting it straight and aligned and clamped properly. And uh, also uh, the Nomad Portable Table. And we're kind of showing you how we use that. These little quick clamp half vice grip type things just slip in these precision drilled holes and are the handiest thing ever. So if you, just for holding this thing still, getting a rigid ground while I'm welding them, uh, they're, they're just uh, so handy. Now I'm, I TIG welded a bunch of these, uh, at least four pla side plates, but since there are like a hundred and something welds to do, uh, uh, and because these welds are going to be hidden, never seen, and welded over top of again to hold them in. Uh, I just had to opt to MIG weld them then. You can see how quickly that goes. There's no way you could TIG weld them that fast. So even though they take a little bit of grinding to get them flush, uh, someone else can do that while I'm welding and uh, makes the job go a lot quicker. You kind of got to pick your battles on stuff like this. You'd like for every weld to look great, but sometimes it, you just got to settle for being a good weld and, uh, and moving on getting the job done. So I'm going to show you how we use the fixturing and uh, modular fixturing system to tack weld this thing together. Sometimes things need, most of the time in fact, things need to be clamped up uh, really tight. And when you think of fixturing, you think of things being clamped tight. But this, in this case, it needed to kind of float uh, in free state. Because everything, the wheels and the roller pins, uh, the roller, the brass rollers needed to all be in alignment more, more than anything. So using these little V-pads that float along in these slots... Uh, was just the thing. Use some round stock that's the same size as the uh, rubber track that goes on the crawler body to simulate that and then when you put the, uh, the crawler body uh, with the wheels set down on the round stock and I have a stop on each end then I'll show you how I use that in just a minute. When you set that down on the round stock and then you drop those side plates in that already have the uh, the brass uh, rollers on them. Everything has to be aligned, and it floats in and out a little bit according to where the different slight differences in the OD of each piece of tubing, and, and it does vary. So I, I, slide, I slide the side plates up against the wheels, and then the the uh, crawler body against one stop, and then move the crawler body against the other stop, and that lets it be even. And now I'm ready to tack. Now, that was pretty easy. That's quick. Now, since I've got 20 of these things to do, I don't want to bump it back and forth with a dead blow hammer with a spacer plate and try to get it even. I don't want to do that. No, I want to just do one step like this and, uh, and be able to tack it. And that's where, the, that's where this fixturing system really uh, comes into play. Now, a little tip for you here is if you can tack quickly enough to where that red hot ball on the end of the wire never cools off you will get a crisp start you will get a crisp start it won't stutter on you and uh, you know we're all taught to snip that wire in between every weld well there's an exception when you're tack welding if, you, if you're going along tacking stitch welding on expanded metal or something if you can hit that button again that trigger before that wire cools off uh, you will get a crisp tight small tack that you can weld over top of uh, nice and easily and that's what you want is you want a small tack that is uh, is a good tack even with the wire sticking out this far with that wire good and hot on the end I get a good crisp start so that's it that thing's tacked in four places it's done I'm gonna run through all these things and uh, and uh, I'll have them all tacked probably in, in uh, you know less than an hour where it probably would have taken me two or three hours without the uh, without the quick fixturing system there so it's pretty cool all right that one's all done 19 more to go right fun fun okay now they got them all tacked up what I want to do is I want to use the the nomad portable table because I don't want to breathe all that smoke so I pulled it outside the door of the of the shop it's hot and humid no air conditioning but pulled it outside the door so the smoke goes out and I don't have to breathe it. A little bit of breeze blowing just enough to where I want to blow my shielding gas away and uh, weld these things up, uh, 20 of them. That's like uh, almost a thousand inches of weld. And uh, so 
I'm a, I'm a busy guy for the next little while. Now the first well we make is the one that's radius where that stainless steel wheel goes. So here's the first one. The reason we make that first, if you weld the long runs first with only those four small tacks on it, you will pop a tack loose. It'll, that uh, shrinkage stress of the weld will be enough to pop the tacks loose and then you'll have problems. So but welding on the ends like this, these short runs, weld all four ends, uh, then never, have, never will have a problem. Those little small tacks are enough to hold it together. You don't want to put tacks midstream if you don't have to, because going over them, you can always tell where the tack was with MIG, unless you want to put little tiny pig tacks on it. And, uh, you know, that just takes a little longer and everything. So each job's different. You got to kind of take it by a, you know, case by case basis. So, uh, well, it made that weld a little bit smaller because I'm a little bit concerned about uh, making sure there was enough clearance for that stainless steel uh, pulley wheel to fit in there without having to rework it and machine it or grind it down. All right, the main weld here on the top of the side plates is the one that everybody sees. So that's the one that you want uh, that I want to make look look the best. So using a little uh, series of E cursive E type motion or an ocean wave or whatever uh, will make a nice rippled pattern that's uh, kind of pleasing to the eye. And uh, people tend to like it better than just a smooth weld with uh, really, really tight ripples. So, you know, when this thing's all plated and everything, it kind of pops at a, at a show when they're, when they're trying to display this thing. The bottom, got to weld all the way around these side plates, and the bottom of it is kind of a flare bevel V, and all I want to do there is just uh, kind of sew it up. I'm not really worried about uh, making evenly spaced ripples. I want to get it done fast. So here's kind of how that goes. You can see the previous, that circular weld on the pin where I MIG welded that. It's been ground off, and we're going to weld everything, tie everything together with this weld. All right, here we go. Not doing any much of any kind of motion here. I just want to. I just want to get it done. So, making a small tight weld, motoring on. Just trying to go as fast as I can. Looks fine. All right. After welding the uh, side plates on, there's a little bit of bar stock that gets welded on these, and then they go to the platers. All right. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.